What's up guys, Eric Psychic here and today I want to show you guys 10 Tibia PvP tips and tricks. For those of you that PvP regularly, you may know most or all of these, but I'm going to dive deeper into some of these tricks and teach you things you may not have considered. I came up with most of these tips from a hardcore PvP perspective, but you'll find a lot of these work well and sometimes even better on open or retro open PvP. These are my top 10 Tibia PvP tips I could come up with, so here we go. Number 1 for my first trick, I want to show you guys how to get a head start on anyone who's trying to kill you. So whenever you're in a town with a sewer grate and you have people you need to escape from, here's what you do. As you're running by the sewer grate, magic wall it and use it as fast as you can. If done right, your character will jump down the sewer grate even though it's covered and your enemy won't be able to follow you down. It can be pretty hard to do if you're running by fast, so make sure to practice this little trick before trying to use it in a battle. I found the most reliable way to make sure you nail this trick every time is to magic wall the grate and instantly right click if you're not using classic control and then click use. When I do it this way, I pretty much get it every time. Beware though, if anyone crosses your path while you do this and you bump into them, it'll cancel the action. This little trick is a great way to escape in towns like Yalahar or Thighs if you know the sewer grates well. Your enemy will be so shocked by what just happened and will have to stop to Exiva you which will buy you precious time to escape. Number 2. So most PvPers know what a defense is, but have you ever seen a one-man defense? One-man defenses are special areas in the map where you can go by yourself and wedge your way into a wall or something to keep attackers out. Obviously you're susceptible to being drained, but if you have a ton of supplies left and you're by yourself, you may be able to last hours in here. The goal of a one-man defense is to either survive until server save, bore your enemies into giving up, or at least make your death the biggest inconvenience for them. Because hey, they're your enemy, right? Who wants to make things fun and easy for their enemy? So I know of a couple popular one-man defenses myself, but I'm sure there are many more hidden ones in the game. The first is in Oromon next to the Oromon West spawn. In this spot, you can only be attacked by one direct attack. Everyone else can only hit you with area of effect attacks, and that does not include UEs because they won't wrap around the pipe. My level 370 friend Fiasi has taken the spot on Dolera a few times and it takes at least 20 people to kill him here. If he was level 500, they would need even more and possibly not even be able to kill him, especially if you prepared ahead of time and brought some elemental sets. The next is in the factory quarter of Yalahar. As soon as you hop through the gate, all you have to do is head southwest into this little nook and you won't be able to get hit by direct attacks from anywhere except whoever is next to you. This spot isn't as good as the Oromon one though because your enemies can stack to avalanche you and they don't hit themselves, but on a world like Retro Open PvP, you should be immortal in this spot since people can't really avalanche on those worlds without risking a red skull. The next spot isn't really a one-man defense like the others where you can go by yourself because you can get outpumped easily here as a knight and comboed easily as a mage, but if you or a friend owns the guild hall to the west which is the Sun Palace, you can actually CO through the open window and keep your knight friend alive in this spot. We've used it a few times on Dolera to keep our knights alive in the past, but nowadays we just take defenses usually. The same thing can also be done up at these houses to the northeast near the Magician Quarter. And like I said, there's probably many more spots like these out there in Tibia for you and your team to find. Number 3 How many times have you went and killed someone, and right as you're about to lose PZ you get soul fired by a high level which renews your PZ for like another 10 minutes? Or maybe you only have 1 minute PZ and a Paladin Yutori sands you or a Knight Yutori cores you. If this happens, you can cure your negative status conditions at particular NPCs around Tibia. The most known is probably Heracles and Benuda. You can find him upstairs on the southern tower and if you ask him for a heal, he'll cure you. The next, which is lesser known, is NPC Albert and Edron. This NPC is located over in Stoneholm and will also cure your negative conditions like Soulfire. The last NPC I know of is in Carlin over to the west of the depot, which is handy if you get Soulfired in the free account lands. But besides these NPCs, there are also temple NPCs that can be pushed to the edges where you can ask them for a cure. If you head to the Spargron temple, 9 times out of 10 you'll find the temple NPC close enough to be talked to through the wall. I personally use this NPC all the time to cure my electricity while doing the Heart of Destruction quest. Linda in the Church of Thighs can also be moved to the edge, as well as Quentin in the actual Thighs temple, but you'll need a friend for him because he normally never ends up to the edge by himself. Cuatro. This next tip is kind of random, but I wanted to show you guys some of my favorite stacking spots and tricks that work great for killing other people. Most people know that stacking is an easy way to kill people, but here's some of my favorite spots and things I like to do. The most obvious one is the sewer grate to the west of Thighs Depot. Stacking here is the easiest way to kill a player who map clicks or just naturally walks to Thai's boat. We use this spot all the time and it always works since Thai's is such a hot spot for people coming from Rashamul, getting Inquisition Bless, etc. The next is in Ankerman. This spot is great because of the natural crates that spawn here. If you and your team turn into the crates and throw the extras away, as long as you don't have PvP squares around you, your enemy will never notice anything out of place. The same goes for these crates in Carlin. 
A long time ago, Guide the Hill used to be upstairs in Duratia and able to be pushed to this square, but I believe he was moved for this exact reason because we used to stack underneath him while wearing the Oriental outfit and people wouldn't be able to see us. You could still stack here though and turn yourself into something inconspicuous like a vial if your enemy isn't paranoid. The nice thing about this spot is that your UE will reach the ladder so it's next to impossible to miss your attacks. You can also reverse these spots and instead of waiting upstairs, you can wait downstairs. We do this occasionally when we're waiting for someone in a town like Carlin when they're buying blessings. Since Tibia's angle makes everything slant to the top left, you'll be hidden underneath floors as long as you avoid the north, northwest, and west squares, and then you don't have to worry about transforming into an item to be hidden. Number 5 this trick has to do with holding an action. Imagine in this scenario you're being chased by someone and you try to run up to a building, but they proactively m the door so you can't get in. Well, if you have a friend willing to help you out, you could have them stand inside and hold the door, then once your enemy m it, your friend can close it, open it, let you through, then either of you can m it off. I know it sounds kind of complicated, but hey, it's a trick that you can master to try to throw people off. It also works if, say, you're trying to squeeze your team out of a building and your enemies are magic walling the door to keep you inside. If you designate one person to holding the door for everyone, they can continuously right click it every time the door is open and then close it whenever someone magic walls it so people can keep running out. And there's more to this trick than just that. You know how you can trash those potted plants in Oramon to block people or botters? Well, you can trash troughs too in certain spots with this trick. So you can't directly throw items on top of a trough, but you can put items in a doorway, close the door, and have all of the items pushed out on top of the trough. I haven't found any really good spots to do this, but I bet someone can come up with something creative. I know for me personally, if I was trying to run into a building that had invisible troughs in front of it, I would definitely not be able to react fast enough before I got surrounded. Number 6 This trick also has to do with holding an action. Have you ever been blocked by someone in a one way and your only way out was to push through? Or maybe you're waiting for the opportune moment to push someone and catch them off guard. Most times people will have fields around them or flowers, but if you're dealing with a player that's trashing themselves or you have a team to help destroy a field for you, you can actually hold a push and move them even with trash under their feet. This works the same way the other tricks work. You just need to perform the action before anything else changes. So in this case, if you click and drag on someone when nothing is under their feet and then they trash themselves, the moment you let go they will be moved no matter what. You can use this to try to time pushes when magic walls drop, push players who think they're safe from being pushed, and more. Number 7 Here's another push tip that can really come in handy when dealing with people who are hopping. There are a lot of buildings in Tibia people can hop up and down and even if you manage to push them, they're still right next to a staircase and able to jump back up. With this tip, I'm going to show you how you can push people two squares away from the staircase or ladder they're hopping. So what you have to do is put yourself in a position where everyone is able to touch the player who needs to be pushed, and then for every square you want to move them, you need a player who can touch both the player being pushed and the final square. This is because the game registers your action on the player no matter where you're trying to move them. If you try to push someone two squares by yourself, you'll receive a sorry not possible message. But if you try to push someone two squares and they happen to step next to the square you're pushing to, they'll get pushed. This is also why you'll try to push someone who's moving back and forth and they'll get pushed. It's all about timing. Double pushing someone stair hopping is extremely easy because the game sets your timing up perfectly. You don't need to worry about team speak lag. All you have to do is have both players drag the person as he gets to the floor and your timing should be perfect. One player needs to be pushing him one square and the other needs to drag him from the starting square to the ending square. If done right, he'll be pushed two squares at once and then it's up to your team to move in and trap him. And you aren't just limited to double pushing. I've never seen a practical use for anything outside of the double push, but it is possible to push people a lot of squares at once. Number 8 have you ever spent time chasing around someone who's PZ'd and then all of a sudden they run through some one or two way and a noob character starts magic walling for them? This used to be overpowered as hell before Sipsoft added in the random magic wall timers, but it's still annoying if they have a ton of room to magic wall and don't have to worry about spamming like in Cyclopolis. With this trick, you'll be able to break through an amateur's magic wall spam. To do this, you need one person in your team to not have any battle sign or PZ lock. This person then heads to the front of the line and constantly fills in on open squares as the magic walls drop. The team behind this person also needs to be holding their arrow keys to be ready to fill in on him. If the timing is done right, the player in the front can actually log out, have the players behind him fill in, and then log in on top of the magic wall and break through. You won't be able to kill the magic walling noob character when you log in due to the delay, but you can start chasing down the guy who's hiding to hold his PZ lock while your team waits to get through the magic walls. Number 9 Ever since they added Supreme Health Potions and Ultimate Spirit Potions, Knights and Paladins have been really hard to kill. Even high level mages can be a problem sometimes. 
Here's a trick on how to kill them that a lot of you might already know, but that I felt was worth sharing. It's called a para push. This is when a druid paralyzes the target and then your team pushes them diagonally. This trick works because you can't use a potion, equip an amulet or ring, or do pretty much anything except cast spells when you're in between two squares. And since moving diagonal is so slow, plus the target is paralyzed, you can pretty much destroy anyone if you can land this push. The only counter as a knight is to use Xero Grand Ico and a mage to Utam Ovita, but then if you push them a second time, they're pretty much done for. So since you're probably filled in around the target, you'll have to combo the push with your teammate stepping back so the target doesn't M wall the square. If you're fighting with fields everywhere, you're going to have to destroy field the square you're pushing to first. The best way to do this is to count the push and then have the moving teammate destroy field under themselves and move back simultaneously and another to paralyze. If done correctly, you'll push the target while he's paralyzed and he'll die easily. We use this all the time in war and it makes killing a knight or paladin so much easier. Number 10. For my last tip, I want to show you guys a neat trick my good friend Mike Chockle showed me. So you know how trashing yourself in wars so you don't get pushed can be a little difficult, especially when you're getting pumped, which is why a lot of people resort to using bots to do it for them? Well with this trick you can trash yourself while getting pumped without having to drag worms and blueberries from your backpack at all. All you have to do is fill up every slot in your backpack with items, preferably something light like candy which weighs 0.05 ounces a piece. Once you do this, throw out your vials and fill that final slot with candy. Now whenever you use a potion on yourself, the empty vial will be dropped under your feet. Getting pumped in war means you can mana yourself and prevent yourself from getting pushed at the same time. Of course the enemy can still disintegrate and hold the push like you learned earlier in this video, but you don't know how many times I've tried to push someone and the little menu pops up because they have stacks of items under their feet and it totally throws me off. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed these tips. Obviously some of you have been playing PvP Worlds for years knew most of these, but people of all skill levels play Tibia so I'm sure to some players all of these tips were new. Anyways guys, thanks again for watching, a huge thanks to all the new subscribers recently, welcome to the channel guys, shout out to my boy Hussar, he wanted to be in this video but I never got a good picture with him, and that's about it, I will see you guys next time.